Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the charming Johann Strauss operetta, Rosalinda, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Elaine Melvin. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, we're going to travel to Vienna tonight for one of the most delightful operators of all time. Under its original title, Fledermaus, this work is a great metropolitan opera favorite. Elaine Malvin is Rosalinda... And I am her husband, Henry, as we bring you the great Johann Strauss music for Rosalinda. that singing? It's Alfredo Alivanto, the most romantic singer in Vienna. I will not have my wife serenaded by a, by a soupy troubadour. Now, Henry, you're not going to hit him again. Well, there shouldn't be a law against hitting tenors. Why, everybody wants to hit tenors. I just hope you enjoy your week in jail for hitting him the other night. Listen to him. I'd like to tear him apart note by note. Did you have to slam the window? If you want somebody to serenade you, Rosalinda, why not listen to a man sing? <laughs> a baritone. Rosalinda, love of mine, hear my ardent wooing. Now, isn't that more romantic? Rosalinda, dove of mine, hear my gentle cooing. <laughs> Imagine mooning over a tenor. Pain with you, I share your nest, sweetheart, I implore you. Let me come and ask. Vow that I adore you. Let me come and at your breast. Vow that I adore you. That's very romantic of you, dear. But really. You only pay attention to me when you're jealous. Now, Rosalinda, that's not true. I... Oh, who is it? It's your lawyer. Well, good evening, Blint. Yes, good evening. I've come to accompany you to jail. Now, how do you like this? A lawyer's supposed to keep you out of jail. This one's putting me in one. Oh, darling... It's only for five days. No, no, not five days. I pleaded with the judge, and he changed your sentence. That's what I call a smart lawyer. Yes, he made it eight days. Eight days? Well, at least I'll know where you are during that time. For eight days in jail, I could have hit that tenor a little harder. Who would think that 
that any lawyer would betray his own employer. Really, that's too much for me. Goodness me. We shall see. When I thought my case was ended, worse it got instead of mended. And the guilty one is he. You mean me. Really, he? How can it be? Yes, he's the one to blame, you'll see. <laughs> we lost the case. I'll soon be jailed. You mean you failed? What will you do? I wish I knew. Let me propose a thing or two. If that suggests I must protest, your sense of humor is revoked. It seems you want to be insulting. Be calm and safe. Control your rage. Unlike this fool, I'm very cool. Your husband should go back to school. You stutter over every word. Your slander I have never heard. Don't tell me you complain. Now you insult again. You give me such a pain. You must be quite insane. You, you talk like, like you had no brain and turn just like a weather vane. You're both a part of the same people. Before the landlord tells you so. Yes, she is right. You better go. I think he's oh, better than you. you. So, it's for the bad. It's for the dawn. It's for the dawn. It's for the death. No, no kindly go. go. All I've got to say is it's no use crying over a spilt tenner. Now then, kiss your wife. And let's get to jail. <sighs> All right. Kiss me goodbye, Rosalind, my darling. Oh, Henry. Hmm. Hmm. You mean I I have to give this up for eight whole days? Oh, Jiminy. I don't think I'll be able to bear it. Oh, I do so hate to eat alone. For eight long days alone here within story about my having to go to jail. Because I can really go on a tooth now, and Rosalind won't check on me for a second. Eh, yeah, be careful. Careful? Ha! All right, tonight I'm going to the grand ball, and will be just like my bachelor days again. Hey, Rosalinda will find out about it. No, sir. No, sir, she won't. I'll go as, uh, well, the Marquis Reynard. Well, at least uh, do me one favor. Leave your watch at home. My watch? Yes, the one that chimes. Every time you hold that watch in front of a pretty girl's eyes, 
she forgets what time it is. <laughs> no, Blint, I won't use the watch. Merely my charm and maybe a few soft words in this matter. Drink, my sweetheart, drink with me. Oh, I will make your heart feel free. When your heart beats strong and true, all things will seem clear to you. See that joys don't last. See that love's a dream. See that vows are broken fast. Oh, not what they seem. All too fleeting, all too brief. Laughter is and happiness. But in wine you'll find relief. Through forgetfulness Happy he, happy she Who forget what cannot be Fortune's kiss brings you bliss If you remember Blint, we're off to the ball. Madame, Madame Rosalinda. Yes, Adele. Could you give me the evening off, Madame? Why, you get more evenings off than any other maid in Vienna. But I've just received word. My aunt is dying. The last time your aunt died, you stayed away for three days. She dies slow. <laughs> or could it be that you want to go to the grand ball tonight? Well... You stay here and work. <gasps> Poor auntie. It'll be the first time she's had to die without me. <laughs> Ma Madam Rosalinda, if you let me off, I'll tell you a secret I just overheard. That depends on the secret. All right. Your husband isn't going to jail at all. He's going to the ball disguised as a... A bachelor. Oh, as Marquis Renard. I overheard him just now. Oh, that big sneak. Adele, you're going to that ball as my lady in waiting. <gasps> oh! If he can be a Marquis, why, I'll be a Countess. A Countess? Yes. The mysterious Countess Humantazzi of Hungary. How's that for double-crossing a, a double-crosser? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> You know, when you talk shop with friends, outsiders often have trouble understanding many of the special terms you use. But I dare say everybody is familiar with such special terms as roundhouse, caboose, cowcatcher, 
Yes, ever since the Iron Horse was born, the colorful and lively language of railroading has enriched our speech. And many railroad terms like sidetrack, tank town, and double header have become a permanent part of our everyday language. And like the railroads themselves, railroad language is constantly changing, constantly being brought up to date. For example, which of the following words remind you of railroads today? Ignitron, diesel, track circuit. Well, the answer, as you've guessed, is all three. The Ignitron locomotive makes possible, right on the locomotive itself, the efficient conversion of alternating or AC current to direct or DC current. The efficiency, economy, and hauling power of the diesel-electric locomotive has worked a virtual revolution in modern railroad power. Track circuits with electric currents coursing through the rails are the foundation of the signal and traffic control systems of today's up-to-the-minute railroads. These words and still newer words that have come out of the research laboratories reflect the growing and expanding partnership between modern railroads and modern research. For example, the Association of American Railroads has just completed another new and important laboratory at its central research headquarters in Chicago. There and in many other research centers throughout the country, research projects of wide variety are improving today's railroads and pointing the way to even better railroads tomorrow. Better refrigeration for perishable freight, improved control of temperature and humidity in air-conditioned passenger cars, Better methods of packaging, loading, and bracing freight. These are only a few of the important railroad research projects currently under study. And the list is endless. For as today's opening of the railroad's newest research laboratory indicates, your railroads are expanding their research activities still further in order to bring you still better transportation for better living. Now, here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Rosalinda, starring Gordon McRae as Henry and Elaine Malbin as his lovely wife, Rosalinda. Both have gone to the Grand Ball in disguise, Henry as the Marquis Renard and Rosalinda as the Hungarian Countess Humontatvi. Won't you join us at the ball? What a child, what a life, is the ball the prince is giving. What a joy to be living on a night so gay and bright. When it comes, let us all sing and praise with the words of his friends. When it comes, song and dance. When it's all in song and dancing, let it cry, so it's dancing as the wine and song and dance. Now, this is what I call a party. Flint! Oh, yes, sir. Flint. Who is that ravishing-looking creature in the silver mask? Oh? Oh, that's the Countess Humantazzi. Hungarian, you know. What a figure. What grace and charm. Oh, haven't you ever met her? Oh, now, how could I have been tied down the way I am? But excuse me. I'm going to ask the Countess to dance. May I present myself, Countess? I am the Marquis Renard. Oh. And I should be honored if, if you would dance with me. Would you, Countess? Uh, that's French, isn't it? Oh, no, no. It is Hungarian. It means... Yes. Well, that's a relief. Shall we dance? Oh, Countess, you waltz like a dream. May I ask, are you married? Are you? Oh, no, no, of course not. Ah, you're not? Well, uh, not really. Oh, you mean not happily. <laughs> yes, that's it, not happily. What a shame. Oh, now, uh, <laughs> well, don't misunderstand me. You see, my wife and I, uh, we have an agreement. Does she know about this? Well, you might say it's a sort of a silent agreement, you see. She's, a, she's more of a homebody. Oh. Yes. I'm a different type. I need the whip of adventure. I need romance, a change. Can you imagine me day in and day out looking at the same face? Unthinkable. Oh, I knew you'd understand. Countess, from the moment our eyes met, I, I had the feeling that I'd found a kindred soul. You practically described my own life. That's remarkable. The only difference is my husband and I have no agreement whatsoever. 
I know the type. Dull and possessive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why I'm divorcing him. You certainly should. He sounds horrible. Doesn't he? Why don't you give me a chance to... to make you forget your husband? I wish you could. Uh, but, my dear Marquis, how do you know who I really am? Under this mask, I might be your wife's maid. Adele? No, 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 Monsieur Le Marquis. You have made a great laughable error. Surely you know a great lady from a lady's maid. My dear Marquis, surely you see your really good discreet. Take my advice, next time look twice when judging those you meet. My delicate hands is too fine <laughs> to wear a turn to this ankle. Madam, I know now just who you are. You do? Certainly. I can tell by your entire bearing that you, you really are Countess. Now, may I distract you further with this watch of mine? Your what? Yes, listen. Listen to a charm. Charming. Come, uh, I'll show you. It, it uh, works much better outside. Again? No. <laughs> It will work perfectly all right here. Oh, Countess, you've made me forget every other woman I've ever known. Her whole bearing is delicious, and her figure most propitious. Hands so brittle, feet so little. All these treasures kiss I would if I only knew I could. In his prison, he has come here bent and to reason. Think of kissing while he's missing from his dungeon for the night. You'll be punished for the night. You'll be punished for the night. If your magic beauty vanished, how sad and grieved I'd be. But my fears would soon be banished. If you lift your mask for me. Oh, my cavalier, a warning. Do not doubt me, even I swear, my good dear. You will be scorning if you touch the mask I wear. All his sighing denying, and his staring, and declaring, his passion while declaring, retreat, by my question, very soon, I am testing if he knew what my fate I will be. be. Very soon now, very soon now you discover, discover Your watch is very tantalizing, my dear Marquis, but it does not 
tantalize me. You are the rarest woman I've ever met. Tell me who you are. Take off your mask and, and let me see for the first time your lovely, lovely face. All right, Monsieur Le Marquis. I remove this mask and I am simply... Oh, Rosalinda. I'm not really married, Countess. But, 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 I need the hoot of adventure. Oh, but... Sir, Romance. But, change. But, now, oh, you're now, going Rosalinda, to get please. that change. Oh. Rosalinda, the waltz is beginning. I'd like to ask you two questions. Yes? First... Will you honor me with this dance? And second, when you finish divorcing that moronic, imbecilic, stupid husband of yours, would you marry me? Well, I might. Under one condition. Anything. Throw away that watch. The watch? Oh, watch. No watch. <laughs> In exchange, I'll never listen to another tenor again. It's a bargain. Now, my love, let's waltz and show everybody how much in love two married people can be. Rosalinda with music by Johann Strauss, book by Gottfried Reinhardt and John Meehan Jr., with musical adaptation by Eric Wolfgang Korngold, lyrics by Paul Kirby, was dramatized for The Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? With the signing of a truce, fighting in Korea came to a halt. But as in all wars, the scars remain, and as always, the most pitiable victims are the children. To help alleviate conditions in Korea and make this Christmas a happier one for Korean children, the men of the 3rd Transportation Military Railway Service in Korea under plan Operation Goodwill are asking your assistance. If you have any bed sheets, blankets, shoes, or clothing you don't need, won't you send them to needy Korean children? Address packages to 3rd Transportation Military Railway Service, APO 301, care of Postmaster San Francisco, California. Or if you wish to make a contribution for this purpose, send your check or money order to this same address. Third, Transportation Military Railway Service, APO 301, care of Postmaster San Francisco, California. Thank you, Marvin. And now, folks, here again is our lovely star, Miss Elaine Malvin. Thank you, Gordon. Stop on the show train next Monday night. Well, Elaine, you listen. <laughs> Roberta. I love that show. Well, you know, I guess we all do. And Dorothy Kearson will be with us to sing that great Jerome Kern music. Wouldn't miss listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Elaine. You were wonderful. All aboard! Well, dear friends, looks as though ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying thanks and goodbye. <laughs> Rosalinda was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae may soon be seen in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> The Voice of Firestone features Eleanor Stuber on the NBC Radio Network.